uh, information that we've collected from an experiment in order to determine the energy of activation and the frequency factor. So we have this information. We've, get, we've been given the temperature and the rate constant. And we're going to use an Excel program to plot these points and determine the slope and the y-intercept. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Excel worksheet. I've already put in the temperature in Kelvin and the rate constant in order to make it a little easier to show what's happening. So what you're going to want to do is um, we want to find the value of 1 over t. That's going to be our x. So you just press equal and we would press um, just the equation, 1 over, and then hit the number and press enter. By clicking on the cell and dragging it down, we have the calculations for all of the temperatures given. Now let's take a look at the rate constant. For the rate constant, all we have to do is press equal and then start ln. Make sure you click on the function that you want to use because then it'll be in the right format. And we want to select all of y. I mean, we want to select this the K and then that will calculate it and we will click down again and it'll fill it in for the rest of the cells. All right. Now, in order to find the slope we're going to need to use our slope formula. Um, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and graph this. So I would select my y values first. And then I'm using a Mac, and this is a 2011 Office program. So I'm going to hit the command, click on my x values, and then highlight those. And then I would just go to charts. And from charts, I would hit insert chart. We're going to see a list. Go all the way down to where you see scatter plot. So we're going to do a scatter plot. I'm going to scooch this over so you can see it. Um, and then uh, I want to manipulate just this just a little bit. So now I have the chart. I'm going to go to the chart layout and I want to hit trend line and I want a linear forecast for the trend line. So that way it uh, forecasts all the way to my y-intercept. Um, using my chart, I want to get rid of my legends because they're just um, interfering. So I'm going to select legend and eliminate those. And now I'm going to label my axes. So I click on axes titles from the chart layout. My horizontal title, I want it below the axes. So you see that I have 1 over t as my horizontal. And my vertical axis is going to look like that. And my vertical axis is the natural log of k. So now that I have my chart done, I can calculate slope. Again, I just press the equal sign and start with a capital S. It gets me to the slope. Now I need to select all my Y's, so I hit, click on all the Y's, uh, put a comma in, and then click on all my X's, and press Enter. And now you see that I have my slope. For the Y-intercept, it's the same way, equals, and then start out with the I, which will take me to my functions, and I just hit Intercept. Now, see the directions? You have to follow the directions. It says known Y's. So again, I do the known Y's with a comma and then the known X's. Press Enter. Now I have my Y-intercept. So it's ready to go. I have the slope and the Y-intercept from the graph. When you're doing this in a lab, remember that you're going to want this graph to be approximately half a page of your lab write-up and you're going to want to include the information all the information here so that um, you can present your data and you can show everyone where you got that information. So make sure you do that and you're careful with that. 
So we have our slope and we have our y-intercept. So now what we need to do is go ahead and put it into our equations. Well, we know that the slope, that the energy of activation is equal to the negative slope times r. r is that constant value that's taken from the gas laws. It's 8.314 joules per mole. Um, so we are going to want to multiply 8.31 4 times negative 1.03 times 10 to the fourth because that was our slope and divide it by a thousand because we want it in kilojoules so our energy of activation or our barrier our activation barrier is 85.48 kilojoules now in order to find a we would we know that the natural log of a is the y intercept so the y-intercept was 29.9667. So we could round it to 29.967. And the natural log of A, to find A, we would just take the inverse of the natural log. Um, best thing to do is just use your calculator and hit the inverse of natural log. But A equals then 1.027 times 10 to the 13th per second. So I hope this helps you to use the Excel worksheet in order to calculate the frequency factor and the activation barrier from known values that you would probably collect in a lab situation. Have a great day.